here in Albuquerque, the friendliest church in Albuquerque, and we're glad to be back home. We had an awesome time in El Paso, fellowshipping with Pastor Capco and the churches and the uh, in the area, and we really had an awesome time. Yeah. Pastor Keckel preached on a message entitled Get Your Praise On, and that's exactly what we did. We were we were there for the fellowship and the end gathering, and, and we just had a, an awesome time in yeah. God. And my prayer is that you come this morning expecting the same treatment because yeah. God has been good to us. So we want to share his goodness. Let's worship right now. Invite him into the service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful, oh Lord, for your mercy, your loving kindness, oh God, how you're always there for us, oh God. Have your way this morning, Lord. Feed souls, men and women, Father, out of darkness. Show them the path, oh God. Help them to know you as their Lord and Savior. Help them to receive all that you have for them. Help them, oh God, to understand why we praise you, why we worship you, why we serve you, oh God. For you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody, just anybody, say amen. 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 Come on, brother, let's take some leaders and song. Yes, God. Help me sing that first song. Are you one?
head to back, head to your classes. Grown-ups, you gotta stay, sorry. Fast X is mean, he's gonna hold you hostage. I got a message for you. Actually, I'm going to start a series. Pastor Hicks, have you ever preached a series before? We did it a while ago, but uh, God gave me a series, and I want to share it. It's going to be good. Amen. It's going to be good. The series is on sin, the effects, what it is and what it ain't. All right. How many know sin ain't good? Right. It ain't good, okay? <laughs> and the first part this, this morning is going to be dealt with on how all have sinned. All have sinned. My Bible reading is found in the book of Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're having some internet problems. That's why our screens aren't working. And so, forgive us. Normally we would have the, the, the scriptures up on the screen for you, but uh, Sister Hicks is going to be Attempting to get it up, but if it becomes a distraction, we're just going to scrap it. Yeah, so we don't. It's up. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. We're up and running. So Romans chapter five it reads, "Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all." have sinned. Amen. For unto the law, until the law was in the world, but sin was not impugned when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude or in comparison to Adam's transgression who was the figure of him who was to come. You know, when I read the Bible, I, you know, it starts off with Adam and Eve in the garden, right? And God had everything all laid out. They had it perfect. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All they had to do was walk around and tend the garden. They didn't have to pull weeds. They just had to make sure everything was nice and pretty. And God gave them one rule. You know, if God doesn't give us any rules, he's not really our God. Not right now. If your parents don't set any uh, boundaries for you, then you can just do what you want. But because you have parents, because he's God, he has to give us some limits. All right. He says, you can do anything but eat of this certain tree. You know how kids are. But you know where they got it from? They got it from Adam and Eve. <laughs> they said that, that sin nature, that sin nature, it started way back there. For a text I'm going to use this morning, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This morning, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to preach on all have sinned. All have sinned. None of you can sit here and say, not me. No, all have sinned. Brother Jim, could you stand and pray for the message this morning, please? Father God, I just pray that you would illuminate for our hearts yes, the God. meaning of the words that are being spoken today. I just pray that you would help all of us to keep your word in our heart. Unlike Adam, who did not keep you in his heart. Yes, God. And I pray, Father God, that you would help each of us to be a beacon of light for those that we come across this next week and to be able to preach the only salvation through Jesus Christ to all that we come across. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All have sinned. Now, some sins seem bigger than others, because they have these obvious consequences that are much serious, much more serious. You know, if you see somebody go down the street and shoot somebody in the head, you know the police are going to go get that guy. Mm -hmm. You know that there's, oh, you're in big trouble now, because you did a heinous crime. Uh -oh. 
We just witnessed it and, and we can't believe you did. That's terrible. You see somebody cut somebody off in traffic, you're like, man, I hope somebody catches that guy. Because that was wrong. And you know, but it's not as serious. You know, you, you don't expect the SWAT team to go looking for that guy for cutting them off in traffic. <laughs> you know? And so we think that, you know, what is just some sins are just little and some are, 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 are worse than others. And but God says sin is sin. You know, one little sin is too much for you to get into heaven. Amen. I need you to know that. I need you to understand. You say, well, what is sin? Sin is the transgression against the laws of God. And God even explained it to us. He, he broke it down that we might fully understand how much he loves us. He wants us to understand. I want you to have your heart's desire, but I want you to have it in a right way. See, a lot of people, they think, man, I'm a Christian now. I can have whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. You surely can. You know, sinners can do whatever they want. But there's a cost that has to be paid. Can I get a witness? There's a cost that has to be paid. And if you don't realize that, uh, you're going to come to a rude awakening. You say, well, uh, I live in America. It's a free country. I can do what I want. Have at it. But there's a price. When we stand before God, we won't be able to say, I did it my way. You can. But he says, you're not coming in my heaven. There's a place reserved for those that have sinned against God. Murder. Hatred. Yeah. All these terrible things, you know, but people don't think about greed as a terrible sin. They don't think about jealousy. But don't you know, these are the things that lead to murder. They'll kill you over a gold watch. Kill you over a Rolex to, to take your car or, or things that really don't have any eternal value. That's how the world is and, and that's what sin does to men and women. All sin therefore leads to death because they disqualify us from living with God. That's the ultimate death separation from our heavenly father. Adam and Eve experienced this. We're going to talk about it, but I want you to understand how, how it felt. Uh, Brother J.P. was talking about how it felt good to be there with the brethren in El Paso. I'm talking about he never met these people before. He said he'd never been to El Paso before yesterday. But when he got there, he said he felt this love. He felt this family love. And he met some young GIs and, and just a whole bunch of Christians. And we had a good time. Amen. We were in a family. It was like a, a great time together. But when you get there and, and you start experiencing this love, you, you understand that, uh, Pastor said, we came in fellowship because we are in one the mindset of serving Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the family that we're in. And so if we're in this family, we have to abide by the rules of the family. There are things that we do and things that we just don't do. We don't uh, steal from our brothers. Can I get a witness? Amen. We don't lust for his... I, I want that jacket, JP. Mm -hmm. You didn't take it off fast enough. Knock him over here and take his jacket. Come on. That's how the world thinks. But God says, that's not how my children think. Yeah. That's not how we live. And see, a lot of times we like to pick and choose sin. So, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I've never robbed a bank. I've never shot 
heroin into my arm. I've never done this. I've never done that. I'm not that bad. But God says all have sin. Amen. So you can't make yourself look good by minimizing your sin. I just smoke a little weed. <laughs> Everybody tips a little tip. Little, little, little. It's okay. It's cool, right? I'm not, I bet it's not heroin. I'm not doing crap. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. He said it's still sin. That's right. I'm drug free. Woo, I'm so glad he's not talking about me. Yeah, but I still got a little anger problem. I still got a temper. I still like to curse people out, give them a piece of my mind. God says, regardless of how great or how small they may seem, it's all sin. Yes. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it tells us, the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. He says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. I don't know about you, but I want my gift. Yeah. Talking about all of sin. Yes. So we got to go back to Adam and Eve in chapter 3 of Genesis. This is not the very beginning, but this is a good part to jump in. Here. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he, this is God speaking, he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? This is a snapshot of what happened. They had, been, had it pretty good. I told you they, they had it at ease and, and they had the fellowship of God. They got to go around and, and just have a little talk. How many would love to have a talk with Christ right now? Amen. I mean, just say, man, Lord, help me to figure this thing out. Yes. This is hard. This is difficult. My family is broken. My, my life, my mind is scrambled. Can you just give me a little bit of insight? They got to do that every day. How was your day? Oh, man, God, we saw these things. I don't know what they call them. Um, Maybe roses, that's what it were. And they were they were blooming. It was beautiful. We we saw these tulips. We saw all oh, you know, they got to share the things with God. Yes. Yes. But now, because they sinned, now because they had rebelled against God, now they were cut off. Mm. Now they were literally hiding from God. How many of you had somebody had to say it's time to go to church? I don't want to go. Come on, we're going to church. Okay. <laughs> and they, they dragged you, kicking and screaming. You said, I'm going to sit here. But I ain't going to hear nothing. <laughs> I'm going to sit here. All right, sir. You can drag me to church, but I'm not going to listen. Because that's how far sin has separated us from God. Yes. It makes us want to stay away because we can't, we, we know that something is wrong. We know in our heart, in our mind, you know, we know. Nobody had to tell you when you walk in the church, you already know. Oh, man. You feel this conviction. You feel this condemnation. That is not normal. Because they weren't feeling that before. They longed for the time to talk with the God. Yeah, they look, they look forward to it. I mean, I, I really look forward to coming to the house of God. Yeah. I look forward to the time to worship. Hey, we were singing, we were dancing. I looked at the video, I was acting like a complete fool. But I was having a good time worshiping God. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, it was people over there, I would pick on them. Hey, you, come on, sing with us. Get in. That's what's happening when you have nothing hindering you yes. in your relationship with your Heavenly Father. Amen. No sin, nothing is stopping you from getting in and getting close to Him. Yes. Amen. But now, because
because they sinned. Now because their eyes were open to what darkness really was. Mm. He said, because we were naked. Yes. Because we we've done something wrong, God, so we didn't want you to see us. Mm. So we hid ourselves. But the psalmist says, where can we hide from God? Say, if I don't go to church, God won't see me. Don't you know God sees you everywhere? Right. He sees you in the liquor store. He sees you on the bar stool. Okay. He sees you in your bed of despair. He sees you in your car when you're sitting in that traffic like crying out, Boy. I need help. Yes. Yes. But you won't look up because of the shame. You were naked. Who told you that you were too dirty to come to the house of God? Who told you that? Because the devil's a liar. Yes. Right. God says, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Hey, if it wasn't for his mercy, remember, he says, the wages of sin is death. Amen. He said, but there's a gift. Yes. There's a gift that God wants to give you that will give you that eternal life yes. that you've been longing for. Yes. I'm talking about all of sin. Yes. It's common. It's common to, to just live in the fault and the folly of the world because of the nature that was passed down by our forefathers. You know, my family had a long line of alcoholics. And so, by design, I'm supposed to be an alcoholic. But how many know the devil's alive? Amen. Because God can break the yoke. Yes. Amen. He can break that cycle. Yes, thank you. You, can, you can come to God and say, God, I don't want this curse on my life. Yes. God, I, I don't want to destroy my family. I don't, I don't want to see my life go down the train. I don't want see my liver give out. I don't want to die from cancer. I don't want to die from the things. Come on, God, help me. Yes. Amen. That's what God is waiting for us to do. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. See, sin is right in front of us everywhere. We see it. But we're so used to it, we think we're supposed to be in it. Everybody does it. Everybody sins. Come on. And Adam and Eve, they didn't admit their guilt. They passed it on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's six, where were you? Uh, my wife, she says she wanted to do something else so we didn't go to church. Mm. All right, six, six, where were you? Oh, it was a sale at Macy's. Uh -oh. <laughs> Buy one, get three free. Who wouldn't go? Come on! Who wouldn't go? We can go to church any old time. See, we we sell God out for less than that. Right. We sell God out for less than that. Hey, what what are you doing today? Oh, I'm going. Well, I'm going to go to church. Eh, maybe I don't know. I don't feel like it. I'll, I'll catch it next week. Uh, you know what? I'll catch Pastor on the rerun. On, on Facebook Live. I'll mm. catch you later. Mm. And, but, but God is saying, I got something for you right now. Amen. Come and get it. Yes. I got something that's going to change your life to open your eyes to what real sin is mm. so that you can break free from its hold. Yes. They passed it on. She said, It was a serpent. God. God knows. Amen. He even knew. He even knew. He said, who told you yes. that you were naked? Mm. See, a lot of times people don't come to church because they say, church is full of hypocrites. Oh, they look down their noses at me. Mm. They think they better than me. Mm. 
Pastor, he's got on his shiny suit. He think he's all that. I got a suit too. It's not like that. That's right. Because I remember being right where you are. Oh, yes, Jesus. I remember being lower than low. Yes. And I also remember somebody reaching out and loving me. Yes. I remember somebody saying, hey, you don't have to stay that way. You don't have to continue to hurt like that. That's right. You don't have to continue to, to cry out in the, in the nighttime and, and feel like nobody's hearing. Because God is actually hearing your cry. It's up to you to respond as he's sending somebody your way. I don't know how you got here today. But God knows. Amen. The Bible says you can't even come unless the Spirit joy you. Yes. Say the spirit. What spirit? Hold on, hold on. What no spirit? <laughs> Jesse invited me. That's why I came. That's it and that's all. Cut it out. God says you can't even come unless my spirit gives you yes. that, that option. You say, man, I'm going to go check this out. Mm. I'm glad when you get like that because God is working on you. Yes. See, I'm, I'm cutting that out right now. Mm. He's working on you now. Mm. And I'm glad. Amen. Because I know the other side. He said, I want you to understand this. A lot of times things are happening in your life and, and, and the things that uh, Adam and Eve did, they were sinful in nature and it passed down through generation, through generation. Now we have this sinful nature. Now we, we, we can't resist it because it's something that we feel born to do. Mm. Your flesh will fight you tooth and nail no matter what you try. If you say from now on, I'm not going to say the number three. <laughs> your mind says, I'll give you about three seconds before you'll say three. <laughs> Just any, anything that you, you try to tell yourself, I'm not going to do, your flesh says, what? You didn't lost your, that, that's my favorite thing to do. We're going to do that all day. We're going to do it until you realize how much we love doing it. Say, I'm going to lose weight. Oh, no, you're not. I'm going to stop cursing. Woo! No, you're not. I can, no, that's not going to happen. Because your flesh, it fights against your spirit. Your, your flesh knows. I told you, if you really stop and thought about it, this flesh wants to go to hell. Oh, and it doesn't even realize, come on, I don't like to sweat in the uh, New Mexico heat of the summer. I know I don't want to go to hell. But my flesh does everything hellish to get me there. Thank God for his spirit. Yes. Thank God. He says, therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, some people think that if I just follow the rules, I'll be all right. If I just do things like God says, don't touch the tree, I'm not going to touch the tree. God says, uh, don't curse, I won't curse. God says, uh, uh, go to church, I'll go to church. I'll do everything. I'll do what Pastor said do. Okay. Raise my hands. Praise the Lord. God is good. But, but you never got changed in your heart. Amen. And so you're just going through the motions. You're just showing up to church. You're just occupying a seat. And there's never been a change in your heart. You still have that sinful nature. Right. And so you can't get free, even though you're doing the best you can. Reach it. Because your flesh yes. is fighting against you. Yes. Say, no, I train my flesh. Oh. That's why I'm a party builder. <laughs> okay. No Twinkies in this body. Okay, maybe some in this body. But in the, <laughs> <laughs> no Twinkies in this body. I'm a body builder. I got everything under control. He says, but it's not enough. 
It's not enough before a holy God. So we get to our Bible reading here. He says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, remember because the wages of sin is death, so then death passed on to all men, for that all have sin. Yes. None of us can say, e no, not me. Yes, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sarah, the Vanessa, Ines family, <laughs> that little angel back there. <laughs> She's a sinner. <laughs> All of us are sinners, except for the blood of the Lamb. Now, I know her mom and her dad are going to cover that baby in the blood. And God's going to give her a space. But when she comes of age, she's going to have to accept Jesus Christ for herself, too. He says all have sinned and come short of the glory. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not impugned where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, yes. even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who was a figure of him who was to come. How can we be declared guilty of something that Adam, some dude we never met before, I never met Adam. I don't know Adam from Eve, right? <laughs> you know Adam? Anybody know Adam? Not personally. Not personally. You don't know him personally? We know that dude was real famous, though. He started a whole lot of foolishness. <laughs> we don't know Adam. Right. Say, God, come on, cut me some slack. I, I'm not with him. <laughs> he said, no, it's past that. Many feel like it isn't fair. How can God judge me by what this fool did? I want to be with him. You know, sometimes you get in the wrong car at the wrong time with the wrong people. Then you hear that police car pull up. And your buddy went down the window, start going, stop. I'm like, what's going on? Help me get rid of this. Get rid of what? Let's go. You got caught up in some stuff. Yes, sir. All right. That's what's happened in our lives. Sin has overtaken us. And the devil knows that there is a remedy. But he doesn't want you to get to it. He knows that God is going to save you. He knows that God is willing to forgive you. But he does not want you to ask God for that forgiveness. He'd rather see you perish. He'd rather see you destroy yourself and grab and take as many people with you as you possibly can rather than see you get saved. Rather than see you get delivered from this bondage of sin. Each of us, we have to recognize the sin that is within us. All right, yes. Paul said, I, I had not known sin until God told me, thou shalt not. Yes. When you realize there are some things that you just aren't supposed to do, and you've been doing it, that's time for you to say, man, I need to get right. That's right. God says that we should lust after someone else's spouse. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I never touched it. I just, I just, you know. He says, it starts in here. It starts in here. Before long, you're actually acting out. And then you realize, man, I've crossed a bridge that I thought I'd never do. I've done something I, I thought I'd never do. See, Adam sinning. His nature became so guilty, so corrupted. Like I said, he couldn't even stand before God. And you know when you've done something wrong. 
Sometimes we like, even kids, we know. We know that we stole that last cookie. We know that we didn't do our homework. We know something we, we know we should have done. We didn't do it. And so we come in the house kind of sheepish. Mommy say, how you doing? I say, fine. I'm just going to sit over here in the chair. You never come in the house and sit in the chair. What's, what's going on? <laughs> nothing, nothing's going on. I'm trying, trying, I'm trying, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a normal day. But that condemnation is all over you. The guilt is all over you. And you don't know how to get free from it. And so you start lying and, and, and conniving and trying to manipulate the situation, trying to shift the blame. Try to just get it off of you. Oh, Jesus. Mm. It's not mine. It's not mine. Mm. But God says, because of that nature, his nature is passed down to you. It's passed down. It's passed down. And all of us have the same nature. He says, it's a mystery, but it's true. Things that you and I can't figure out, but it's true. And I told you, you can test it. You can test it anytime you want. Mm. Anytime you want. Just tell yourself, for the next three hours, I'm not drinking water. Okay. <laughs> the next three hours, I'm not going to drink water. All of a sudden, your photo will be like, oh. <laughs> oh, we're in the desert. We're going to die. We're going to die. Just, just get a Coke. Just get a Coke. Just get a Pepsi. Just, just get some coffee. Get something to wash this down. Say, no, it has water in it. I'm not going to drink water. That's it. And watch your flesh attack you. Mm. Your own body will turn against you because you're denying it something that it wants. Mm. That's the sin nature that's in you. So you think about this. Man, God, the deck is stacked against me. Mm. How can I break from this? Yes. How can I get free from this? Listen here. You think about it. He talked about Adam. He's a figure of one that is to come. Don't you know help is on the way? Yes. Help is on the way. So I went to 1 uh, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it reads, And so it is written, The first Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Mm -hmm. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is of the Lord. He is the Lord from heaven. Amen. And as the earthy, such are they that are earthy. And as the heavenly, such as they also are heavenly. Yes. You just got to break that down, Pastor. Break it down. Break it down. He said, look, Adam was a created being. Remember, God, he formed him from the dust of the earth. And then he breathed into his nostrils, nostrils and made him a living soul. God breathed the breath of life Amen. into the fresh first man. Yes. He was literally an animal in an animal's body. We're human beings. We're, we're animals by comparison to our heavenly father. Amen. Okay? This first Adam was made a living soul. God gave him life. God breathed into him and gave him life. And he gave him dominion over all the other animals. He's higher than a dog. He's, he's more than a lion. He's more than, you know, the beast of the field. 
But he's still an animal. He's not heavenly. Mm. But he does have a spirit. Can I get a witness? Amen. You gotta stay with it. Understand. Having life, we didn't have life in ourselves. We got it from God. But Jesus, Jesus is God. He has life in himself. Did you understand what I'm saying? Amen. You, you got to understand this. See, when Jesus was born of a virgin, Pastor went over this yesterday, it was sweet. He says that he, he used a female body without a sex act. It was a God thing. God put the seed inside that womb. That's it. And his son, Jesus, was born of a virgin. Amen. He said, why was it a virgin? So that Jesus would not have that sinful nature of man. Yes. So now we have this perfect God living here amongst us. But he's in an animal body. A physical body. And the wages of sin is what? Death. So can I just sacrifice um, Beulah? We're going to use you today. We're going to just kill off Beulah so all of us can go to heaven. No. Is that going to be good enough? No. no. God says it's going to be a perfect sacrifice. Mm. And so Jesus, the sinless Lamb of God, Die in our place. Thank you, Lord. You think about it. So, because he had life in himself, when he went to hell, hell had no dominion over him. Hell couldn't control him. Mm. He got to hell and they were like, hey, we got a new one. But Jesus went and took the keys. Mm. The people who, who were running hell were like, what is going on? He's not bowing down to us. He's not listening to us. In fact, he's going around letting people go. Mm. Jesus went around and he told them, I'm the one that I've been telling you about all these centuries, all these years. I've, I've been ministering. You've been reading the word and, and you, you're not understood, but I am he, the great I am. He was come to deliver those who listened to the word. Amen. Those who believed my heavenly father. And now I'm here to set the captives free. Yes. And those who believed, he took with them. And those he didn't, he left down there. Mm. And he rose again just like he said he would. Yes, he he rose to deliver you and I from this bondage of sin. See, sin has control over our lives. Just like I said that our flesh wants to dominate us, sin wants to control our lives. That's right. Sin says, you can't have a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Sin says, come on, how can a man be satisfied with just one woman? You got to have two or three. You got to have a side girl. Or you got to have... No. What? That's right. How did that come to pass? Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for Sister Hicks. That's right. I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful. I mean, one other thing I, I always say, who else would put up with me? Mm -hmm. Who else would come and say, all right, I'll rub your back, I'll rub your neck. Who, who, who would do that? Who's looking for a 57, 58-year-old man? <laughs> Little chubby likes to eat. Who, who? Uh, give me one of those. I'll take one, please. <laughs> no, there are not a whole lot of people running up saying, give me one of those. No. I'm grateful for my wife. Amen. We got to learn to understand what we have and cherish it. Appreciate it. God's been good to us. Yes. And he wants to set us free from the bondage of sin. But people think that this is my lot in life. I have to be led by sin. I've been married to it all of my life. But there's a new Adam. That's right. He came to set us free from that bondage. His name is Jesus. Yes. 
He's not a fleshly man. He's a spiritual man. Thank you. He's heavenly. Yes. And he's come to deliver you from the bondage of sin. The first one was earthy, being from the earth, having forfeited his immortality. Because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. And death is literally the separation between you and God. It's literally, well, you don't get to spend eternity with him. I want to spend eternity. I want to be at the foot of Jesus like this. Amen. That's Amen. right. I ain't going to be from me right back. See? <laughs> I said, I want to live. People are blowing it. Mm. They're missing it. Yes. And for what? Misery and pain? That's it. Mm. Suffering? There's so many kids, so many young men that are perishing in prison. Why? Because they could not control their flesh. Mm. They could not control their urges, their anger. And such were some of us. Yes. But the mercy of God. Yes. He gave us a remedy. Mm. There is a remedy for sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Man. How do I get this, Lord? He says... As we have borne the image of the earthy, it's in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. When we get saved, God wants to make us just like yes. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just like his son. So when people see you, they see Jesus. When they see you smile, they know God is smiling down on them. When they, when they hear you pray, they know that Jesus is praying for them. Come on, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Adam, in our personalities, the Bible tells us for those who know to do right and don't do it, to them it's sin. Did you know that? Yolanda, do you know that God expects you to do so and so? It doesn't matter if Jim does it. He says, but I told you. That's it. If I told you and you don't do it, for you it's sin. Hmm. I'll deal with Jim later. But what I told you. Some of you are like, well, this is the first time I heard this. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, you heard too much. All right. You can't say, nobody told me. Pastor Hicks just told you. Mm -hmm. So when you get to heaven, you say, ah, uh -uh, I never heard it. You say, no, remember? Back there in March 2021, 20, you sat in that church. You tried to act like he wasn't listening, but you heard. <laughs> you tried to act like he wasn't talking to me, but you knew he was. Amen. And he told you, you don't have to be under the dominion of sin anymore. Yes. Man, I told you when I read that verse in the Bible, and I fully understood it. You know, you read things a lot. You read the things a lot. You know, sometimes you go by the store, you, you read the sign on the door, it says our store hours are 6 to 8, 6 to 8, 6 to 8. They open 6 a.m., they close at 8 p.m. You get home, you say, I wonder what time that store closed. <laughs> Man, let me call that store, see what time. They close. Until you have an emergency, you're like, Man, I need something. And you get to the store and it's closed and it's 8.05. From now on, you know what time that store closed. All right. Right? Yep. 
I was reading the Bible. Just reading the Bible. Just reading the Bible. Just listening to God. You know, when you read the Bible, God's talking to you. And I got to that part in the Bible where he said, Sin shall not have the dominion over you any longer. Amen. <clears throat> this is optional? I can break free from this? Yes. I gotta read that again. And when I read it, I realized, brothers and sisters, you and I don't have to be in bondage to sin anymore. Amen. We don't have to let our bodies dictate what we're going to do. Hmm. We don't have to let our sinful nature say, oh, we're going to play hooky from church. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to go steal that. We're gonna... No. Pastor Keckle said, Satan, get thee behind me. Amen. How can this happen when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts. When we ask him to come and set us free from the bondage of sin. How can we do this? I want to be free. Read the rest of Romans chapter 3. Verse 24 it says, all right, we're going to start with 23. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Boom, that's hard. Slap upside the face. <laughs> then he continues. It's a, a, a cold, semicolon right there. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, God wants to redeem us. Amen. Whom God has sent forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Jesus wants to set you free from sin today. Right now. Pastor, I'm talking about, I, I, I did this a long time ago, and it's still bothering me. How do I break free from it? Bring it to Jesus. That's right. I can't erase it from my mind. He says, wait. Let the blood wash it away. That's it. Put it under the blood. Paul explains that God declares our righteousness, not we. God is the one who's going to wash away our sins. God is the one that's going to bring peace in our minds, not works that we can do. Nothing we can do can undo what we did. That's right. Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Nothing you can do can undo what you did. That's it. You can't fix it. But God can forgive you. Amen. God's mercy wants to touch you even right now. Come on, as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, think about it. What's going on in your life? What's hindering you? What's plaguing you? See, all of us have something, and, and, and the devil wants to throw it in your face every time, every, every chance you get to, to say, I, I, I'm going to get it right. He says, no, you can't. You've done this and you're still doing it and you can't stop. Jesus says, give it to me. I'll take it off of you. Lay it at the altar. Get up a clean man. Get up a clean woman. How can I break free? Give it to Jesus. I'm here right now to set you free. He says, Whosoever shall confess their sins, God is going to forgive them. Perhaps you're here this morning and, and you're hearing this message and you're, you're trying to figure out, God, are you speaking to me? Then you know he's talking to you. And see, right now nobody's 
eyes are looking around. Nobody can see what's going on, but I want you to just lift up your hand and let God know that you want him to touch you. Lift your hand up. Praise God. God sees those hands. God bless you. God bless you. Let, let God know, Lord, I, I need a touch. Lord, I, I want to be free from the bondage of sin. Lord, I want to be free. You can put your hands down. Praise God. He knows you. God wants to know. Are you going to let your flesh hinder you from getting what you so desperately need in your soul? A peace that passes understanding. I want you to tell your body, no. Get up and make your way to these altars. Come on up here. Somebody's going to pray with you. I'll pray with you. One of the sisters will pray. Reverend Leticia will pray with you. But come and tell your body no longer will I be bound by sin. No longer. You're going to rule me. Because I want to be free. I know all of sin comes short. But I want the gift of God even right now. Hallelujah. Keep coming this room for all. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. What are you waiting for? He's calling you. He's loving you. You know you're hurting. You know you're bound. You know you're longing for this. Oh, yes, God, we praise you even right now. Speak to our hearts, oh God. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Hallelujah. Oh God. Yes. Wherever you are, even right now, stop praying. And let God minister to you. Let God minister to you.